Hi and welcome back to the giant world of tiny things and yet another creative macro video and you can tell I'm really excited to share with you how to create images like these. Now just in case you haven't guessed it yet, the subjects you're looking at are crystals. Very, very thin crystals on a plate of glass photographed with cross-polarized light. Now typically the technique of cross-polarization where you use a polarized light source and a polarizer on your camera lens as well is used to remove specular highlights from shiny subjects but today we're going to use a polarized light source to backlight our actual subject and introduce the phenomenon of birefringence which is responsible for the psychedelic colors that you're looking at right now. Now just in case you're interested in the science behind it and how exactly this works, check out the blog post in the description below where I talk a little bit more in depth about this whole subject matter. But for the sake of keeping this video short and simple, we're just going to go over a list of things that you need to get started and then I'm going to share my personal camera setup with you guys and show you some images that I produced with it. So what do we need for this project? Well, you're obviously going to need a light source, you're going to need a camera with a macro lens and you're going to need a polarizing filter on each of those. But at this point we're still missing something and that's our actual subject. To get started you don't need any fancy crystals, all you need to get started is a cheap piece of transparent plastic such as a plastic fork or a CD case and you can start discovering the hidden world of colors. But if you'd like to get deeper into it and discover the actual world of crystals, there is a very widely available crystal that you probably already have in your kitchen. And just in case you're guessing salt or sugar, you're wrong, it's much more simple than that. The subject that I'm talking about is ice. To keep this first setup simple, I decided to create my layer of ice directly on a CPL filter. To do so, just place a bit of water on that filter and pop it into the freezer for a couple hours and then you can place it on your light source and start shooting. You're looking at the results right now. It's also worth noting that the faster the water freezes, the larger and the more intense the areas of color are going to be and that's why I recommend using hot water and only using a very very thin layer of it because both these factors make the water freeze more quickly. Now if you got bit by the shutterbug at this point and if you'd like to dive deeper into this whole subject matter, please feel welcome to check out a list of birefringent crystals that you can use at home for your own experiments in the description below. All of the substances that I just mentioned and that we're using in this video are water solvent but with some of these I found that they increase the surface tension of the water when I dissolve them and that just means that the water becomes really hard to spread on a sheet of glass and that makes it difficult for flat, really flat crystals to grow because as the water evaporates the surface of the water just keeps decreasing and in the end you've got one messy crystal that doesn't look very nice, not very pleasing and it's really hard to focus on because you need too much depth of field. So my tip is to use just a tiny bit of dish soap or a couple drops of alcohol to help break that surface tension and be able to spread the water nicely across your glass. All of the substances that I just mentioned can be found on Amazon and all of those are harmless to use and in the next step of this video we're going to experiment with some of those and I'll share my personal setup. Let's go!
To take these images I used my Canon 60 Mark II camera body in combination with the Canon MPE 65mm macro lens which is an extreme macro lens that yields up to 5x life size magnification right out of the box and actually most of the images in this video were shot somewhere between 4 and 5x life size. Now of course I know that not all of you have lenses that allow you to get this close but whatever lens you're using there are always plenty of ways of getting closer and increasing its magnification ratio such as extension tubes or close up filters or Raynox lens or a teleconverter or even just using a smaller sensor camera body is going to increase the effective magnification ratio of your lens. Alternatively you could even adapt the microscope objective which is a really really great way of getting getting quite close to your subject on a budget and they are really easy to adapt as well but they are a topic for a different video. I just meant to list a few different options of getting really close with your subjects but now we're going to have a look at my camera setup and how I stage things to create the images that I show in this video. As you can see I mounted my camera to a tripod and I'm using an intervalometer because there's really no way of making this word handheld at least not at extreme magnification ratio such as 4 or 5x and I'm using the intervalometer to make sure that I don't shake my camera by pressing the shutter button. If you're working on a tripod at extreme magnification ratios but you don't have an intervalometer just use the self timer function of your camera and that will allow to compensate for the motion blur or the camera shake that pressing that shutter button introduces. To draw your crystals you can use any piece of flat transparent glass that you might have at home such as the glass part of a picture frame such as I used in one of the previous sequences or a glass cutting board which you might potentially find in your kitchen or of course a microscope slide which is going to work as well but I prefer the cutting board as it makes for a much larger surface and therefore a much larger variety of different compositions that you will be able to find within your crystals. Now alternatively you could also use a CPL filter as we did previously when we were freezing the water in the freezer and that just allows you to polarize your light without actually adding an additional polarizing filter which is really quite convenient. For my light source I used an LED floodlight which is really really brilliantly useful for macro photography as it's also battery powered it's really useful in the field as well and I'll see if I can find an Amazon link to it and I'll link it in the description below because I think it's a really recommendable product and to polarize the light I used a linear polarizing filter which you'll also find in the description below. Now that's pretty much it for my setup. There's just one last thing that comes to mind that you should know about. When you're drawing your crystals and you're not seeing any colors under cross polarization, don't give up and don't get frustrated. Just try out different ways of crystallizing it, different solutions, different amounts of alcohol or dish soap in it because it really is a lot about the thickness of the crystal and if the crystal is too thin it's just going to stay white and transparent and pretty much boring. It also depends a lot on the speed of evaporation of your solution so just experiment as I already told you that is the key to creating great images. I really enjoyed having you guys and I'm really glad you watched this video all the way to the end that means a lot to me and if you're enjoying the content which you seem to do please don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and if this is your first time on the channel hit that bell notification button down below to get notified when I release my next video. Last but not least I'd like to mention that I'm really excited because I just recently published my Patreon page which is an awesome platform for artists to connect with their audience and for the audience to support the artist with a cup of coffee or two a month. If that's something you're up for you're in for some awesome exclusive rewards and to find out what these are check out my Patreon page which you can find in the description below. Thank you so much, I'll see you either on Patreon or in my next YouTube video next Friday. Until then, stay creative, keep shooting and have a good time. Bye!